Hey everybody, it's your girl Emma E2K, and we're here uh, with the one and only amazing queen, Mo Adu. She has, she's uh, blessing Hi. us today uh, on EmmaE2K.com, um, or you can follow the YouTube, which is uh, YouTube backslash Emma E2K. So, I have her here because on the month of March, which is Women's History Month. Exactly. Um, I like to, you know, step in to start honoring all the amazing women that are out there really doing the work. And this queen here next to me happens to be one of those. So she's an advocate for women that are veterans, as she's a veteran herself. And, um, and I'll let her tell you a little more about um, her story, and then we can ask her some questions. So... Tell Hello. us a little bit about, about uh, you know, how did you become, how did you uh, get into the military first, Liz? Um, I think I was always like a tomboy and I always felt like I wanted to serve the country. Um, I used to start off with G.I. Joe. I used to watch G.I. Joe oh my God. a long time ago and I, was, I just thought it was like really cool. And then um, there was a song that used to come, Be All That You Can Be In, in the, the Army. Army. And that got me. And I was I wanted to go in when I was in high school. My mom didn't want me to go. Um, so I went into college, and I just really had this gut feeling. I just wanted to be a patriot. I wanted to serve this country. Um, I felt like I wanted to do more with myself. So a lot of people go and they want to do it for education. They want to do it, but I just really just wanted to serve the country. And can you quickly let the audience know where you're originally from? I'm originally from Nigeria. I am Nigerian, and um, you know uh, my parents came as immigrants to this country, and um, I'm a U.S. citizen, and I wanted to serve this country. This was my home. This was my country, and I wanted to protect it from. Anybody that were trying to, you know, come against this country because, you know, it gave us opportunity. So why wouldn't I want to protect it? Awesome. So how long were you in the military? I was in there for five years. Um, I got out because I got, um, I got injured and I also suffered some MST, military sexual trauma. And um, I believe that because of me trying to talk about the issues that happened to me uh, caused my separation from the military. Because back then when I was in, women that were getting sexually harassed or dealing with that stuff would get, um, you know, reprimanded and things of that nature. Wow. So something happened to you, any, um, any sexual uh, advances were made to shame you? Yeah, it was either shaming or you either got demoted or it's just something people don't talk about and they just sweep it under the table. And things of that nature. Wow. Wow. It's horrible. Um, you know, to know that um, you have this love for the country, um, you go and fight for this country and, and you know, give your time, nearly your life. Um, you, you're there and you get, um, you know, sexually attacked or advance or whatever have you done stuff that you don't want to and you can't even speak about it because you're going to get demoted or reprimanded like that's crazy um so how did you handle that um at the time i talked to one of my um ncos and you know i was married at the time so i also believe it contributed to my divorce um i kind of i felt I felt ashamed. I felt um, I didn't know who to trust because this person told me that they could eliminate me. And then the fact that they were shredding my paperwork and my own NCO that was my boss had no idea what was going on. Wow. And I told her, you know, what had happened. And, you know, she tried to defend me and, you know, she grabbed some of my paperwork, but they ended up transferring her, you know. So it's like almost everybody covers up for everybody. Mm. And, but she saved my paperwork. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been able to get my disability. Because they were shredding my paperwork and, you know, wow. and I mean, what could I do? I was young. I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought these people were here as uh, superiors to take care of the soldiers. But right. apparently that wasn't what happened for me. And I got separated one day. They just said... You're not in the military anymore. They cut my money. And mind you, I'm taking care of a child. And, you know, and then I didn't know how to talk to my husband at the time about it. 
I felt ashamed and then I felt bad because, uh, you know, it's the military. Like, how do you say that the military or somebody in the military did something like that to you? And then you're, then I start suffering from depression. I wasn't the same. I didn't feel like I wanted to do anything. I didn't, you know, I also ended up becoming homeless after I finished, you know, uh, you know, having a divorce and everything. And I had to take care of my child by myself. And there was no existence at that time. You know, there was no... Oh, uh, like a, a wounded war. There were no organizations geared, or people. People really, honestly, are just now really realizing that females are going through trauma, and that females actually serve too. So many people walk and they say a man, and they say thank you for your service, but it's actually the wife or the significant other that served in the military. Mm. Women have been serving in the military for years. Mm. So, um, okay, so you went through that.